Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film The Robin Hood of El Dorado from 1936, and this is continuing my quest to review as much of William Wellman's filmography as I possibly can within the year 2013. Juan Marietta, who after his land is just randomly taken over by a bunch of white bandits during the gold, California gold rush who just want the land because they're white and I guess they deserve it, and so they take it away from Juan and rape his wife and like badly maim his mother and then that puts him on a quest for revenge where he goes out and kills these guys for ruining his life then he lays low after finding out he's a wanted bandit joins a gang of bandits and becomes the lead bandit among them because he has the biggest reward on his wanted poster so he should be the leader according to him they go and ravage the countryside and try to steal from these white gringos who are come to ruin you know what these mexican farmers have done in california all their lives destroy their land and victimize their families and things like that now the interesting thing about this film and this i think would be a cool movie if it was just about juan marietta and was very pro the Mexican farmers in the 1840s. What William Wellman does here, which is uh, shows a lot about his tolerance. I think William Wellman made a lot of films about tolerance and what intolerance meant and how prejudice can really infect a situation and how it can spread throughout a situation and go with both sides. Like no side is completely good and no side is completely evil in a lot of these arguments. Probably more so in the Robin Hood of El Dorado than like the Oxborough incident later. The, the Mexican farmers really don't like the gringos and the gringos are constantly making fun of these Mexican farmers and saying racist things about them as well. They're both kind of guilty of it on both sides. The view of violence in this film is that that violence will eventually have an effect on someone else's brother and mother and such. Even though this film really does feel like kind of a B, kind of regular studio Western in a lot of respect, I understand it was kind of a bigger production. It does feel like kind of a standard studio Western. Wellman is smart about how he builds these characters and builds these storylines. It's like subtly, intelligently made. And this film does have a high reputation because it's looked at as kind of a revisionist Western. It, it has regret in there and sentimentality, especially for the ways of the old with Juan Marietta and how that really matters to him and how a lot of the things you'd see later in Peckinpah films like The Wild Bunch are in the Robin Hood of El Dorado. And now this is 1936, that was a long time before you would have Sam Peckinpah. But you can definitely see the line to Sam Peckinpah with the Robin Hood of El Dorado. It's not really like a 30s Western. Is, I mean, it is a 30s Western, definitely. But it's, it's very unique 30s Western. It's almost like at the end of this, no one's really going to win. It's a really a real current going through it that like violence begets more evil and more regret. And how this film views racism it says a lot about Wellman's view on racism. That's what I think would made Robin Hood of El Dorado, even though like a lot of people have problems with a lot of the casting and certainly some of the portrayals of the Mexican farmers in this film. But I think Wellman did his best to make up for it. I noticed that even in The Hatchet Man, he like really tries. This is a much better attempt than The Hatchet Man. It did not handle race very well. And I think this film handled it a lot more appropriately and a lot more adult and a lot more contemplative. What if you hate this person and I hate that person? What is that going to create? What is this situation going to create? Kind of like a little bit of a dash of like kind of like a do the right thing you know if we start this situation where is it going to go and that's a lot of that is in the robin hood of el dorado and because i think that's so important to the character of juan marietta something started him you know he didn't just go he didn't wake up and was like you know i just feel like killing dudes and stuff he really has a reason to go out there and a reason for his people for what happened to his wife and his mother and he really feels wrong rather than just making that an origin story so he can go and go on adventures it's really gives Wellman a reason behind it. And this film almost feels like a gangster western, like a public enemy western almost, especially the scene where Juan Marietta and his gang are going around and terrorizing everyone feels like a scene where you have an unstoppable gang in a gangster film. It's really similar to that. It feels very much like a lot of his pre-code films, even though this is post-code, I believe. There's a grittiness to it. 
there's downtrodden, there's certainly a working class. It feels like a lot of Wellman's uh, Warner's pre-code films, even though this is MGM. It's the kind of stories I think that are attractive to Wellman is people that work. I think he really respects people who work for a living. He has a lot of respect for them. Even though a lot of people complain about Warner Baxter's portrayal, that even though his portrayal isn't great, the way Wellman directed it is really the real star of this because it's kind of like a studio director still delivering product and he's still delivering what the studio wants but he's also doing something artistically with it as well. It's not very well known, it's hard to find. I didn't think I'd actually get to review it and when I went through his filmography when I was starting to decide how I was going to review all these Wellman movies, I thought well I would really like to see it because it sounds interesting but I don't know if I will. TCM played it recently, I don't know how often they'll or if they'll play it again but if you're into westerns I would absolutely say to check it out or if you're into Wellman stuff. It's one of his kind of forgotten little masterpieces I think. This the first time William Wellman was credited for screenwriting was with this film. A year later he would win an Oscar for A Star Is Born. Because he had more of a role in developing it, he could do a little more with it and maybe, you know, his experiences with The Hatchet Man is what really drove him to make kind of a more of a tolerant film. Really handle the Robin Hood of El Dorado with some more tolerance and some more realness. I mean, Wellman made kind of documentary style movies. I think he didn't want to be fake. He wanted to be as real as possible. He's like a gritty down-to-earth guy. He doesn't want to lie to you. He wants to tell it like he thinks it really was. And I think the Robin Hood of El Dorado really encaptures his style with Western. This is the first Western I've seen from him. I mean, he did Westerns later, but I mean, this is the first Western I saw from him in the 30s. I know he started out doing silent Westerns and he was actually trained by a silent film director who did a lot of Westerns and action pictures. So he, you can tell he knows what he's doing with the Western. It's just, it's weird to see him do a Western, especially he does add a lot of what he learned from the pre-code, what he learned from doing things like Public Enemy. As studio as it is, it's also kind of anti-studio at the same time. Wellman seemed to be able to walk that tightrope very well, where he could still do what he wanted artistically, but still the studio heads weren't going to be like, oh Jesus fucking Wellman, you know. I mean, I'm sure they were anyway, but when they got the picture, they're like, oh well he's a good director and he made, you know, a good movie and this is going to play well in theaters. You know, it's still going to work as a 30s Hollywood film, but it's a little deeper than that also. And it's a damn shame this thing isn't on DVD because I think it's a, a really good picture. And it says a lot about him as a director. Someone really should put this out on DVD. It's a fucking shame, I think. This was a good movie and I like what it stood for. That's something I like about Robin Hood of El Dorado. It's like what it stood for, I think is what holds this movie together and makes it more than just, you know, a regular kind of studio Western. So if you have seen The Robin Hood of El Dorado and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. Sorry I've been bouncing around uh, with William Wellman movies. I had to empty out my DVR from my last place. Um, and there were some Wellman movies on there that I wanted to watch. But we will be returning to kind of in order uh, next time, which I think will be next Tuesday or Wednesday. And that's it. Raoul Walsh apparently was considered to direct this film. The film's working title was I Am Juan. It's considered a follow-up to Viva Villa, which uh, Wellman actually directed some of, I guess. He was like brought in. Sometimes they just have you come in to direct a week, and he did some of uh, Viva Villa.